In this video, I will explain how Bitcoin is not the first implemented cryptocurrency. In fact, that achievement went to cryptographer Hal Feeney, who received the first publicly known Bitcoin transaction and helped debug and develop the early version of Bitcoin alongside the creator or creators, Satoshi Nakamoto. To start with, it's helpful to understand the history predating Bitcoin. That is because Bitcoin was very much a product of cryptographic and privacy work in the late 1980s and 1990s. Some of these projects and concepts are mentioned in Bitcoin's 2008 white paper, most notably Y-Day's 1998 eCash system B-Money. While other important projects aren't noted, namely David Shum's own system for transferring electronic money, eCash, through his DigiCash Corporation, which was founded in 1989. Point being here is that Bitcoin's financial cryptographic innovation was built on a series of other projects and their findings and learnings. One of the most important pieces of work in this field was Adam Back's proof of work system. It was cited in the Bitcoin white paper and is the consensus mechanism which forms the backbone of Bitcoin's mainnet blockchain to this very day. Before I continue, however, here's a quick disclaimer. This video is for entertainment, informational and educational purposes only and is not financial advice. The speaker, me, is not a licensed financial advisor or registered investment advisor. With that being said, back to the video. So why is Adam Back so important? Back is a British cryptographer who was extensively involved in the cypherfunk movement in the 1990s. The cypherfunks were a group of pro-privacy, anti-government and libertarian cryptographers used email lists to exchange ideas and discuss issues that impacted their movement. The problem was that these encrypted email lists, remailers, became the target of so-called mail bombers. They would flood a target's inbox by unwittingly adding them to the list. Equally, spammers would target the lists and sometimes use denial of service attacks on them. Although you could ban a particular IP address to stop such behavior, Due to the very nature of these remailers and some of the spammers' own privacy measures, such information may not be available. To address the issue, Back created Hashcash, a system where a digital signature would be added to the header of an email. This would take the form of a 160-bit hash stamp. The stamp's creation needs to use a PC CPU, the work, to generate the random numbers. Think of it like a digital postage charge. Once sent, the recipient can easily verify the signature, proving that the sender was not a spammer. The verification system is reminiscent of recapture systems used on websites today to distinguish between humans and robots, with humans having to fulfill a visual task before proceeding. Although it was designed as an anti-spam system, the proof-of-work algorithm created scarcity, an essential attribute for digital cash. This was recognised by Nick Zabo, who proposed Bitgold in 1998 and would later devise smart contracts. It was also recognised by Wei Day with his B-Money concept, published in the same year. However, the important thing to note here is that neither system went beyond the design stage. A proof-of-work cryptocurrency implementation wouldn't happen until 2004 when Hal Feeney launched reusable proof-of-work. Feeney was heavily involved in the cypherpunk movement and, amongst other things, worked for the PGP or Pretty Good Privacy Company which produced the world's most used encryption program for email. In other words, he was a highly experienced and talented developer. The main issue with proof of work tokens up until then is that they could not be reused since this would allow them to be double spent. In short, Feeney's ARPO system was designed to rapidly validate tokens that had taken a long time to compute, with the addition of a sequential reuse. ARPO allowed for limited reuse. How? The server received both proof-of-work and ARPO tokens, and returned or minted new ARPO tokens in exchange for them. Feeney built trust into the system by running the server on a highly secure and tamper-proof processing card produced by IBM. It was so secure that it was even impossible for Finney, as the owner and operator of the system, to violate the security rules and to create ARPO tokens without paying for them. The ARPO system also offered great transparency. Using a trick called remote attestation, the private key could generate a certificate, 
stating what software is running on the secure hardware component. With this certificate, anyone connected with the server could verify that the secure hardware component was running the exact ARPO open source code without any backdoors or other adjustments. Despite Finney implementing the first cryptocurrency and taking the proof of work algorithm a step further, the ARPO system still had some major problems. It was still a centralized system and it could have faced hyperinflation. Why? Because there was no difficulty adjustment in the mining process. And unlike Bitcoin, there was no strict financial incentive to hold ARPO tokens. This is probably why ARPO never got out of experimental stage. That being said, Finney and ARPO did have a substantial impact. In the short term, it prompted Nick Zabo, who was on several remailers with Finney, to repost and update his thinking around Bitgold in 2005. The technical work also lay some foundations for Bitcoin, which would solve some of the issues with ARPO's problems, such as centralization and hyperinflation. The long-term impact of Hal Finney's work with ARPO is already being seen in the adoption of the so-called metaverse. This is unsurprising since Finney did work for a time in video games development, including the development of Adventures of Tron, Armor Ambush, Astro Smash, and Space Attack. Finney also explicitly proposed that ARPO could be used as a play money for use in online games and fun bets, as he described it. As he said at the time, any system which would benefit from a form of token which can be cheaply passed from user to user, but which is expensive to create, might want to look into ARPO. We know now that the project didn't go anywhere. But in late 2008, Finney started to converse with Satoshi after the Bitcoin white paper was published and posted onto the cryptography mailing list which Finney was an active user on. Amidst the scepticism and online frowning, the resolutely positive Finney remarked, Bitcoin seems to be a very promising idea.